My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hi, I'm Monica Martin, and today's leadership quote is from Stephen J. Stoll. Great leaders find ways to connect with their people and help them fulfill their potential. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. Are you tasked with ordering food for your office? Let me tell you about Easy Cater. With over 100,000 restaurants to choose from nationwide and 24-7 customer support, Easy Cater helps assistants like you and me succeed at work and makes our lives easier. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's your host, Jeremy Burrows, and I'm very excited to be sharing episode 228. You can check out the show notes for this episode at leaderassistant.com slash 228. Eight. And today I'm speaking with Monica Martin. Monica is a longtime assistant in the aerospace engineering industry. And I'm very excited to meet you and chat with you, Monica. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate you taking the time to interview me or talk to me this evening. Awesome. And what part of the world are you in? I am currently living in Long Beach, California but I am born and raised in San Francisco. Okay, nice, nice. And tell us a little bit about you personally. Do you have kids, uh, dogs, hobbies, all of the above? I do. I have three adult sons. Cameron is 27. Austin is 31. Sydney is 33. And I have a beautiful grandson named Nico, who is 11 months. Wow, that's amazing. No pets. (laughs) <laughs> no pets. Yeah, I'm on the same no pet train. Uh, two boys yes. are enough and, you know, it's, uh, it's a handful enough. <laughs> yes, it is. Boys are a handful. Awesome. What's your favorite thing to do uh, when you're not taking care of your uh, boys or grandkid or, or working? I like to go to concerts. Uh, I like to nice. travel a little bit. Um, I tend to do things kind of spur of the moment. Uh, This year, I have had a lot of concerts that I've gone to, so I've been busy. I actually have one tomorrow. Oh, Um, nice. So, yeah. And I tend to be a homebody. Go figure. (laughs) So stay at home or go to a concert, right? Yes. Yes. Those are my favorite things to do. Yes. What's what's one of your favorite concerts of all time? Mm. Janet Jackson. Oh, nice. That was my favorite. If I have to consider all the ones I've gone to, that was my favorite. I like jazz concerts. I do. I like a lot of jazz concerts. Okay. Cool. We got some, uh, we got some good jazz in uh, Kansas city. So come, uh, come visit sometime and we'll go down to 18th and vine and uh, see a jazz show. Okay. I'll take you up on that offer. (laughs) All right. Well, Uh, let's jump into your professional career. So, you know, you've been an assistant for quite a while. Uh, Take us back to maybe how you got into this role and, and, you know, what, what hooked you? It's interesting. I, when I was younger, when I was in high school, I wanted to be an engineer, but my math wasn't very, you know, it wasn't good. And my counselor suggested I not go into that industry, but I left home at 17 and I moved here um, on my own. And at one point I started working at Rockwell International in Downey, California. I was 20 years old and that was the beginning of the aerospace engineering Hmm. environment for me. And so um, from that point, I've just continuously worked in that, in that environment. I worked Rockwell, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, 
uh, different locations, uh, JPL in Pasadena, California. Now I'm currently Aerospace Corporation. Uh, now I'm working for the Los Angeles Air Force Base, Space Force, which is a different environment. It's, it's definitely different working mm. with the Air Force. So, hmm. and so I've just, that's where I landed. That's where it stuck. I've tried venturing out a little bit. I did a little bit in the in, uh, entertainment industry. I worked for Federal Bureau of Prisons for a little bit, but hmm. and Kaiser, but aerospace is where it stuck. Wow. Mm -hmm. So did you have a you know, personal passion for space or rockets or anything like that? Or did it just happen? You just happened to get into that industry at the beginning and it was hard to get out. It grew on me. I think, I think because I wanted to be an engineer, I think that played a big part okay. in, um, I think that really contributed to me staying in the industry and I've worked on some amazing projects, amazing departments and it just, I, I didn't try to look at anything else. I just, mm. that was where my heart was in the aerospace industry. Nice. Did you get to experience any like, you know, live rocket launches or anything, uh, anything fun like that? Any fun perks? Only being in that one, industry? amazingly, only one, and that was really? at that was at Vandenberg, which I think is a beautiful location. I just maybe it's because the person that I connected with they showed me around and they showed me everything, and I think it's a great location and it's by the water, and I like being by the water. But um, that was the only opportunity that I had to see a launch. When I worked for Rockwell in Downey, they had like a mock shuttle there in the bay. And sometimes we had the astronauts come through for visits, but that's about the most exciting thing I've had. Um, wow. and yeah, or I've participated in. But yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, so let's talk about your role then as an assistant. And your title is executive administrator. Is that right? Yes. But I would say it's an executive assistant. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did you have, you know, I see administrative specialist, mm -hmm. senior mm -hmm. administrative secretary, mm -hmm. um, senior executive administrator. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you've had a lot of different titles. So do you, what's your opinion on the title of assistants? I don't think they weigh into what you do. I don't think they really, it's not a big deal to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. A big deal. Um, it doesn't dictate what you do, how you do it. Um, yeah. It may provide a little insight. Okay. She's a senior executive administrator, which is what I was at one point and I stepped down and right. the, responsibilities in that role were definitely more detailed, more involved. It was a bit more higher level person, but the title, it's not a big thing to me. It's not. Yeah. yeah same here. I, you know, I kind of like, I don't care what you call me as long as you <laughs> treat me with respect and I like the work I'm doing and I'm paid well. That's, that's what I care about. <laughs> that exactly. I agree. Exactly. Cool. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about priorities changing and, you know, having to adapt and pivot when your priorities change. What's kind of your experience or advice to those who are in those situations where something changes and they have to pivot and maybe they're, they're having a challenge uh, challenging time doing that. It can be it can be frustrating when you think that you have to maybe adjust or pivot in in your role. Um, I know that I, for me, I was at a senior level, and 
I've always wanted to get to that level. And then when I got to that level and I saw what it was and the experience and such, I felt like it wasn't really what I wanted. It, mm-hmm. It's interesting because as long as, as long as I can remember, I wanted that. I wanted to get to that level. I thought that was it. I thought that was the top of the the ladder. And mm-hmm. I got there or to where I thought I was there. And I said, okay, this is not quite what I want. And so it's deciding, it's sitting in that and sitting down with yourself and saying, okay, am I okay to pivot to something else or change to something else or change my role? What else do I want to do? You have to ask yourself, what else do I want to do? Mm-hmm. Is there something I want to do? And that was something I had that I had to do. And to some degree, I felt initially, I felt like I was a failure in that because I was saying, okay, I realized that this is not for me. And I stopped, I had to just sit in it for a little bit. And then I I was okay. And I said, it's okay to step down or to change your lanes a little bit and keep going. And so I stepped down one level and I like what I do, where I'm at. It's, it's doing the things that I like to do, but it's also opening the door for me to learn other things. It's, it's allowing me to learn things like HR and uh, acquisitions and things of that nature. And then to have a, a VP that tells you, if you are interested in learning about anything else, by all means, go for it. And they're encouraging you. That's always a plus. And so it's okay to pivot. And for me, it it was being able to take back my time because the higher the level, the more demanding it can be. Mm. And it, it was allowing me to take back my time, a little bit more self-care, uh, mental health, which I am big on. And it, And so I'm happy where I am now. And so if you feel like, It's something you want to do, but you're beating yourself up and thinking that you're a failure because maybe you've gotten to a point, you've gotten somewhere you thought you want to be and you realize, no, this isn't quite what I want to do. It's okay. It's Mm -hmm. okay. Step down. It's okay to step left or right and change up and pivot. Wow. Yeah. Well said. I mean, that's got to be very hard for a lot of people to do because they, like you said, you feel like a failure, like, well, I, I'm basically demoting myself and Mm -hmm. that feels like a failure, but not everyone was meant to have these certain titles or these certain levels and not everyone wants to give their whole life to work. And, you know, it's, so it's, you know, props to you for being aware of that and realizing, Hey, you know what, this is, this is not, I, I made it and I gave it a, I gave it the old college try, but <laughs> I, you know, I think I'm, I don't want to do this anymore, you know? Right. So. And I feel much better. Um, I've had, I've had people that I know that I work with say your whole demeanor has changed. Hmm. I'm okay with that. And it gives me time to, it, it allows me to spend time with my grandson and, to do other things and not be confined to my desk so much. Um, mm. Yeah. That's great. So let's also talk about confidence for a little bit and, mm-hmm. you know, advocating for yourself. And that could be, you know, advocating for that promotion originally, or, you know, trying to say, Hey, I'm ready for the senior role. I want to do this. Uh, but it also could be advocating for yourself when it comes to salary or, you know, a seat at the table, or it could even be saying, Hey, listen, I I got in this role, like you said, and it's, it's not for me. I'm going to go back to where I was and, you know, and move on. And, and this is kind of my, what I want to do. So mm-hmm. what, what tips do you have and how have you in your career um, cultivated that confidence and, figured out how to 
advocate for yourself and be confident in that? One thing I will say is in listening to many of pretty much all the podcasts that you've had, and there have been some that were just very much on point in regards to the topics they discussed when it came to being confident and and so on. And initially, I'm, I had a hard time with that because I was at a point where I was not confident. And so when I would hear the others that you've interviewed say that, I, I was not there. Um, I didn't know how to be confident. My self-esteem was kind of kind of crappy. Yeah, you know, it was kind of low at mm-hmm. some point. And it took me a while before I was able to get to the point where I felt confident in uh, speaking up and advocating for myself and feeling like I had a seat at the table. If I would go into a meeting, I would always sit to the side. I would never sit at the table. Now I sit at the table. I don't sit at the head of the table. I sit on the, but I sit at the table. I don't sit on the side like mm-hmm. I used to do. Um, learning how to negotiate salary. That was another thing. And I know that you, that's something that you definitely covered. And I didn't know how to do it. I was scared to do it. But now I advocate and I've had someone give me an offer and I say, no, you know, I'm mm-hmm. nervous, but I say, no, that's, that's <laughs> no, you know. And so I've learned to do that and, and negotiate better. And Amazingly, with the position that I'm in now, when I took the step down, I thought that my salary would go down. It actually went up. And really? so, yeah. And so that's that's another way of being confident and advocating for yourself, uh, being able to communicate what your needs are with whomever it is you support, being able to sit down and communicate that and not. Uh, second guess yourself on that. That's being confident and advocating for yourself and going after what it is that you want. And and it's okay. Like I said, it's okay if you want to change lines. If you get somewhere and you decide that's not for you or it's not a good fit for you, it's okay to say this is not for me and shift. It's okay to do that. And mm-hmm. that's that's being confident. That's advocating for yourself. Those are the things I think. And it's hard and it's hard because, and I'm sorry, it's hard. It is. It's hard doing it. And there are, I still, I'm still learning. I am. I'm still learning to be confident and, and learning to advocate for myself when I need to. I do. Hmm. Awesome. So you were with a team of assistants or have you worked with a team of assistants? in your career or have you mostly been kind of on your own uh, working with your executives? It's interesting. I have, I've been most of the time I've worked on my own. I was a one man show. And so honestly, when I went to, there was one employer I went to the aerospace corporation that required me to work with a team. I was the lead I was supposed to be the lead. And mm. that was that was a bit of a challenge. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat that part. It was a bit of a challenge and it was a learning curve for me. Um did I succeed at it? I'm not sure. But it's a there's a lesson there, and I always try to go back and think about lessons learned. And so I think it helps me now and going forward. And I do see the change in it, but I've always worked by myself. And so in some areas, it was, it was hard to learn to work with a team because Mm -hmm. I was used to driving on my own. And I had to learn, you have to, you have to learn how to be part of a team. And, And that was a lesson. That was one lesson I needed to learn. Yeah. It's uh you know, I'm an, I'm an introvert. I work from home. I like sitting in a dark room, getting my work done. Nobody bugging me. So yeah, <laughs> you can relate. <laughs> you 
you sound like me when nobody's in the office. I I turn off the lights. I keep the lights kind of down. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, that's me. That is me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, it's just like, okay, you're right. You have to you have to learn your people skills, and you have to learn how to be a team good teammate. And it's um, good good way to be stretched as a as an introvert. It is. It is very much that. And there's there have been instances where I've had to be in large scale meetings, uh, gatherings, whatever it is, situations, and I have to be on. And that's what I call it. I have to be on the whole time. But when it's done and you're looking for me, I'm in the closet somewhere mm -hmm. trying to reset because it is, it's a lot. And I enjoy doing it, but I need to decompress. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome, Monica. Well, what's kind of the last uh, last thing you want to say to listeners? You've listened to the podcast before. You have an impressive career in a fun industry. And, uh, you know, what's kind of the final words you want to leave? Maybe it's a tip or some inspiration or, you know, thoughts on, you know, what assistants can do or can, who they can be going forward. What, what would you like to say to assistants of the world? I'm going to say this part, and it's not just, just, let's say, well-seasoned admins like me, mm -hmm. but it's everyone, but I am kind of talking to the seasoned ones because sometimes we get in our roles and we get we get comfortable and maybe we want to we want to venture out and do something else but we think maybe you know it's it's kind of over it's done um i'm at this point in my life i can't do that i can't make that move i used to think that way if there's something you want to do do it don't don't be afraid to make the jump i made the jump I left one place after 18 years, make the jump, you know, it'll be okay. Um, make sure you keep your skills current, be open to learning new things. Um, and keep going, always sit at the table. Don't sit at the side, you know, we're important and we contribute a lot to the places that we work, where we're at, the departments, the division or whatever, we contribute. And so don't feel like you, you're you not part of the team. Sit at the table. You have a place at the table. Um, don't be afraid to sit at the table. Um, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself and advocate for yourself and make sure you have someone who is on your side that advocates for you because that that can be helpful if you have a mentor or you're supporting someone who will get behind you and support you and advocate and encourage you to do things and learn new things and get out there and push you out of your comfort zone. Be open to all of those things. Well said. Great, great wisdom. Thank you, Monica. It's been great to chat with you. Thanks for sharing your insight and a little bit of your story with the world. I'll put your LinkedIn URL in the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 228. If people want to reach out and say hi. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thanks for listening to the show and thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Please review on Apple Podcasts. GoBullows.com